In this video, we are going to give a basic introduction of shaders in Manim. To better understand this video, I recommend you to watch this one as an introduction, because in this video, we will go into more detail. First of all, it is necessary to explain what a shader is. Shaders are programs that run on the GPU of our computer. However, each GPU is different, each company designs their own GPUs with specific instructions, and these instructions change constantly. For this reason, intermediary applications have been developed so that the user does not have to learn how to use a specific GPU and can focus on programming the shaders. These intermediary applications, known as APIs, which stands for Application Programming Interface, are the well-known OpenGL, DirectX, Vulkan, Metal, etc. We can understand these programs as the operating systems that allow us to interact with GPUs, without the need to learn how each GPU works. Each of these applications has its own rules for writing shaders, but in general they are very similar to each other. In short, we as programmers write a shader, we give that shader to the API of our choice, and then this API converts the shader into a program that the GPU understands and can render. Manum uses OpenGL, since it is open source and most GPUs have drivers that support OpenGL, so compatibility issues are minimal, but if you have a very old GPU, more than 15 years old, you are likely to have compatibility issues. All shaders always come in two or three separate files, vertex shaders, fragment shaders, and geometry shaders. Although for more advanced cases, there may be more. In this video, we will only explain vertex and fragment shaders as they are the most basic ones, but we will only learn how to use fragment shaders. The vertex shaders control all the vertices of the objects we want to render. This cup you see here is just a bunch of coordinates, points in space that draw a cup. With the vertex shader, we can modify these coordinates, deform them and perform all kinds of animations. The fragment shader controls the colors of each vertex, the lighting and textures. For example, if I want to make this cup all red, I can indicate it this way using the RGBA format. Don't worry if you don't understand anything, this is just for demonstration purposes. In summary, these two programs, the vertex and fragment shader, will control how an object is rendered on the screen. In this video, we are not going to render objects, but we are going to use two dimensional shaders, that is to say, of a screen. I'm going to leave this repository in GitLab so you can download it, it works in the latest version of Manum CE. The shaders are written in a special language, called GLSL, and it is practically the same for most APIs. We won't go into the details of what GLSL is like as that was explained in this video, it's not complicated at all. The things that change in each API are the global variables available for use, we will explain that in a few minutes. This language is very similar to C, so if you are familiar with this language it will be very easy to use it. In this case, we are not going to render any 3D objects, so we can do without vertex shaders for the moment, we are only going to explain fragment shaders. This is the simplest shader that can be found. First we indicate the version, this line is mandatory, don't forget it. Then we have an output variable, this variable is going to be used by OpenGL to render the colors. We can say that it is the return of this function, but there can be more output values. What we are saying here is that we want all the pixels on the screen to have a red color. If we render the scene, you will see a completely red screen. We can indicate the color in RGBA format that we want on this line. This is fine, but not interesting. Here we have a limitation, 
and that is that we can only modify the shaders directly using GLSL, it would be great if we could modify values from Manim. This problem is solved with uniform variables. The uniform variables are, as their name indicates, variables that come from the CPU and are sent to the GPU. Each API has its own uniform variables, but in the case of Manim, we can define them this way. To use them in the fragment shader, we simply use the reserved word uniform when declaring the variables. Now, the values of the variables R, G, and B can be modified in the Manum code instead of modifying the fragment shader directly. In the introductory video, a variable called iResolution is used. This variable, as you can guess, is a uniform variable that is provided by Shader Toy. Shader Toy is a website where you can program your fragment shaders online. It's a great site to learn from examples that other people have made. Shader Toy provides its own uniform variables, but in the case of Manim, we are the ones who have to provide them. Here we have to explain something extremely important, the global variable frag chord. Imagine that you have a screen of 5 by 5 pixels. The variable frag chord is going to have the value of each of these coordinates in each shader. Then, we can think that the shaders are not a single program, but a scheme of a program, which will be used to render each pixel of the screen. In short, Frag chord changes value depending on the pixel being rendered, while the variable I resolution never changes, since it is defined as an unformed variable coming from the CPU. We face an additional problem that was not seen in this video, and that is that Manum uses a 16 to 9 aspect ratio, so the way to normalize and move the coordinates is a bit different. To normalize it, we have to know beforehand the size of this interactive window. While the resolution is always the same, since we are defining it as a uniform variable, OpenGL assigns a size to the screen when we render the scene. These values are stored here, both width and height. Knowing these values, we can make the necessary transformations so that the center of the screen is normalized. Now that we have this, we can include the time variable. In Shader Toy, it is known as iTime, so we are going to use the same name. Adding the time can be done with a simple DT updater, it's not complicated at all. I will leave you several additional shaders that I took from Shader Toy. You must take into account that not all the shaders that you see here can be rendered, since some require textures or additional information, but a great majority can be rendered with some changes. And so we conclude this video. If you want to continue learning shaders you can see the website called The Book of Shaders, it is free and very complete. Let me know in the comments if you are interested in an advanced course on how to use shaders in Manum CE to make animations like 3 blue 1 brown. I remind you that if you want to learn Manum CE in a professional way, you have at your disposal my four courses, which cover from the most basic to the most advanced topics, all courses are up to date. People write me regularly to compliment me on how easy it is to understand the course. All courses come with a 30-day guarantee, so if you don't like it, you can ask for a refund. If you already have the basics of Manum CE and want to learn Manum GL, you can buy all my codes and libraries for Manum GL. I will leave a video with more explanation in the description. Thank you very much for having come this far. See you in the next line of code.